Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. I don't know what y'all came to do this morning, but I came here to praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I came out here last night. Me and Nora would come out here and and Brother Adam come and his little girl and Nora and him just started singing and that little girl just sung right along with Nora and, and we sung some little kid songs with her and and I tell you what, I just appreciate the Lord. I thank God for everybody that's came out to be with us this morning. I tell you, God has just been so good. I say, God, you send them in this morning. I don't care who, who you send, Lord, you just send them in this morning. Right. And I'm so glad that I came to the house of the Lord this morning. I pulled away and I'm so glad that God has blessed us with a place where we can come and worship Brother Austin. Right. Glory to God, I've been telling everybody, Brother Austin got the Holy Ghost last Sunday morning. And glory to God, our first service. And I tell you what, a way to start a service. Uh, glory to God, I appreciate the Lord this morning. I'm stirred this morning. Uh, glory to God, because I want to see somebody receive something from the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask this brother right here to come up and take a prayer request this morning. Brother Jeff, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great big hand this morning. I just want to pray. I just want everybody to pray that uh, my best friend who does good when she comes back to school tomorrow. She finally got home from a hospital Friday evening afternoon about two o'clock. Remember that? Anybody else? Remember that? Anybody else? I like to have still remember my son. Still remember me that I get my boys back. Build the kingdom, something to witness, you know, to pray for people, to be there for people, to show them the love and teach them God's ways. <laughs>
You know, we need to be a light and we need to show love and patience as Jesus did. So be firm on when we disagree about something, but do it in a loving way. I just feel like much like the church in a hole likes to call it using the wisdom that we have. I think we all fall short on something. They all fall short on it. Yeah. I, 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 I try to speak something on, on them too hard on it sometimes, you know, but you know, I think that's the wrong way to do it. I'm going to pray on that. That's, I agree with that 100%. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Yes, I, I want prayers. A friend and I are having a event at the convention center for holidays. <coughs> and we are going to have a food drive, a canned food drive. I just want everybody to please pray on that, that people will pray. Um, we're going to try to get as much as we can. Um, if anybody wants to donate, they can contact me to say hello to you. Y'all remember me uh, at a, I'll just uh, stand the word like I need to to help the kids for a while. Uh, no, seven year old back there, uh, she's, she, she comes to the office every chance she gets to. Uh, she, she won't be no more. Uh, after one night, I didn't know what she was praying for. I didn't know what she was praying for. She told me she, she wanted to hold it. And my wife told her, said, you know, that, that's good and all. You know, you keep it right for you and stuff, but uh, uh, tell her that uh, she needed to read it and uh, pray for some understanding of the word. But, uh, but, you know, God will give her the Holy Ghost when it's time. Uh, but uh, just pray that, maybe uh, I'm a little nervous, pray that I can uh, stand the word like I need to. Uh, that God will help me understand what I'm reading. Uh, that will be a uh, uh, goddamn miracle. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
God, we pray, God, that you would be with our country today, God. God, we ask that you would bless his Lord. God, we pray, God, for his for God, and we pray for peace for Jerusalem today, God. God, we do, Lord God, and we ask, God, that you watch over our soldiers. God, that you like them for our country, Lord God, we pray that you keep your hand up on them. God, be with those in jail, Lord God, keep our hand up. God, we ask you for the grace, Lord God, we do the same thing. God, we give you all the glory, God, for the Jesus
A lot of people don't realize it, but he's the one that lets you walk, he's the one that lets you talk, he's the one that lets you see, he's the one that lets you hear, he's the one that lets you be and do anything that you do. If it wasn't for God's mercy and grace, you wouldn't be doing it. And we've got to have him, especially when it comes time to die. You know, I've heard and I've read articles that they say that there's atheists here and atheists there, but when it comes down to the time of dying, there's no atheists nowhere. That's right. Because when it comes down to answering to a place that they've never been, because I'm going to tell you something. When we die and we leave this world, we're going to a place we've never been. That's right. And when we get there, we're not coming back. Amen. So when you get an atheist on the deathbed, they're going to say and they're going to think, I'm going somewhere I've never been. Right. And if there is a God, please help me. Right. And we can do whatever we want to in this world, but we better get right with the Lord and stay right with the Lord. Because according to the Scripture, Jesus is coming. And if anybody's got any Bible knowledge at all and they've read the Scripture, the signs of the time is here. Amen. The signs are the time. Amen. You know, the signs of the time are here. You, you cannot depend on nothing. You cannot bank on nothing. Used to, the place to go to be safe would be the church. Right. But nowadays, you can't even go to the church and be right. safe anymore. Yeah. For people that lost their mind, that let the devil take over their mind and go in. You know, when a devil puts a thought in your mind, it's our job to rebuke that thought and not act on it. But when he puts a thought in people's mind and they act on it, then violence comes. Then innocent people goes on and has to suffer consequences. That's why no matter what we do, we need to keep our heart, get our heart right with the Lord and keep our heart right with the Lord. I'm going to say one more and then I'm going to get out of the way.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It's almost time to say goodbye Amen. to this old world of sorrow, Brother Wayne. Hallelujah. I tell you, I appreciate the Lord this morning. Let's just give him a great big old hand. Praise <laughs> Shall ascend up every man straight before him. 
him and Joshua the son of Nun none. none called the priest and said unto them take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord and he said unto the people pass on and come past the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord and it came to pass when Joshua spoke unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blowed the trumpet and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed him and the armed, armed men went before the priests that blowed with the trumpets and the Reward came after the ark. The priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise. With your voice neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout. Then shout, ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once. And they came unto the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. And the Lord went on continually and blowing with the trumpet. once and returned into the camp so they did six days and it came to pass on the seventh day that they arose early and compassed the city after the same manner seven times only that the day they compassed the city seven times and it came to pass on the seventh time when the priest blowed with the trumpets Joshua said unto the people shout for the Lord has given you this city and the city shall be a curse even it and all that are therein of the Lord only Rahab the harlot shall live she and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we we sent and ye in any wise keep yourself from the cursed thing lest ye make yourself a curse when ye take of the cursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trotten and trouble it but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are concentrated unto the Lord. They shall come unto the treasure of the Lord. So the people shouted with the priests blowing with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout. And the walls fell flat. So that the people went up unto the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father God, as I come to you once again. God, I thank you, God, for the reading of the word this morning. God, I thank you, God, for the anointing that I can feel already, God. And Lord God, I pray, God, that you would move this morning. I pray, God, that you would hide me, God, that the world won't see me, but they'll see Jesus. Lord God, I pray, God, that you get me out of the way and let the Holy Ghost come in. And let the Holy Ghost be the preacher this morning. God, I pray, God, that you would anoint these lips of clay, that I'll say what does say the word of the Lord. I pray, God, that you would, Lord God, go through these seats to your God today and check people's hearts out today, God. Lord God, if they be here lost, I pray, God, they won't leave here the way they came. God, if they be here that's backslidden,
said this morning. I pray God that they'll find you, God. I pray that they'll come back and repent and turn their self around, God. God, I ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would open the ears so they can hear what the Spirit was saying to the church this morning. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And the church would say amen. amen. Glory to God. The Bible says here in chapter 6 and verse 20, and the people shouted with the priest, blowing with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. I want to preach this morning on that your walls can come down. Your walls that can come down, brother. Lady. The devil has built walls up around people and tell them they can't make it. They can't serve God. They like the world too much. But can I tell you, your walls can fall down. Glory to God. All you got to do is shout before the Lord and say, Lord God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Glory to God. And he said, Brother White, the other day, he spoke to me. And he said, you tell them that I said their walls can fall down if they be willing to let them walls that people has built up around their cells. Glory to God. Can I tell you, Jericho was a wicked city. Jericho, glory to God, was filthy. But can I tell you, God had a woman there in Jericho that was a harlot. Glory to God, she was one of the women, but God had her picked out to hide the spies. Brother Wayne, you go to a big city and you see these people out on the street corners. Brother Journey, they're out there on the street corner. They're called a hearted or a prostitute. And people talk about them. They got a bad rep. They got a bad name. And no doubt people was talking about Rahab. And they was telling her, well, you you know, she's a woman of, of the world. She does things that she shouldn't be doing. But you know what? God already has somebody sustained. He swept these uh, uh, spies that came in. And he told, she told them, she put them in there. And the men of the city, they came, Brother Wayne. And they wanted them. And she took a purple cord and she let it out the window and she let them down out of the window so they can escape and go back and tell Joshua, glory to God, what was going on. Glory to God. And the Lord spoke to Joshua and he told him, he said, I want you to compass the city seven times. He said, but on the first day, don't make a noise. On the second day, don't make a noise. On the third on the fourth day, don't let them speak, but just play the horns. On the fifth day, he said, don't make a noise. And on the sixth day, Brother Wayne said, don't make a noise. Right. Sister Connie, the priest, they went out before him. And they blowed those horns, Brother Wayne. They sound the alarm. Amen. They let Jericho know that they were there. And the Bible said they can pass that city once. They went around that city once. And the Bible said they returned back to their camp. The second day, they arose up. They done the same thing. The third day, they rose up. Brother Josh, they done the same thing. The fourth day, they rose up. They done the same thing. Just like you. Glory to God, you woke up the other morning and you said, I ain't got no use of living. There's 
listen to me to me even trying no more. Glory to God, I might as well just give up. I might as well just give up on everything. Oh, but God said to tell you this morning, he's got a big old wrecking ball. And he wants to break your walls down this morning. He wants to come in and tear the walls down. That saint has built around you. Lord, if God, it might be a depression. But God said, I can get rid of that. It might be a hate. God said, I can break that wall down. Glory to God. Amen. It might be a jealousy. A wall of jealousy built up around you. It might be a wall of tradition. Glory to God that's built up around you. It might be a wall of a family curse that's upon you. God said, I want to break them walls down. I want to tear them walls down this morning. But glory to God. Joshua told him to go out on the fifth day. And he said, don't make a sound. God said, don't make a noise. Don't you even whisper. Don't you even whistle. You just let the priest make the sound of the horns and the trumpets. Glory to God. And on the sixth day, they began to march around the wall. Can I tell you somebody in here? You're on the sixth day. And the Lord said it's time for you to get ready to shout. Because the walls are Hallelujah. I didn't know who was going to be here this morning. I just know what God gave me this morning. Amen. He gave it to me the other day, Sister Connie. Thursday afternoon. God gave me this message. And I said, okay, Lord. On that sixth day, they marched. You know how a lot of people make you can just imagine all them people, Brother Wayne, they was excited. And they couldn't say a word. They couldn't say nothing, but they was excited because God was fixing to give them that city of Jericho. And I mean, there was great walls built up around Jericho. I'm talking, if you read statistics, these walls were big and tall. And they were built so strong. And God said, Joshua, you do what I command you to do. And I'll give you this city. Well, God's telling somebody today, if you'll come back to me, or if you'll give your life to me, I'll break down them walls. I'll tear down them walls. That Satan has put up around you. I will break them down into pieces. Oh, they came back to the camp on the sixth day. And I could just imagine Brother Wayne in the tents. They was probably talking amongst one another. Man, I just can't wait to see what's going to happen tomorrow. I just can't wait. Just like some church people, I just can't wait to see what's going to go on in church this morning. I just can't wait to see what God's got in store. I just can't wait to see what God's going to do this morning. I woke up this morning and I said, God, I just can't wait to, to see what you're going to do out here this morning. I can't wait to see who's going to be here this morning. Glory to God. I said, Lord, I just want to feel your presence this morning.
I just don't know if they could have slept that night knowing that they was going to have to get up early in the morning. All but the beginning of dawn. Joshua said, get up. And they got up. And he said, now I want you to listen. I'm sending the armed men out. And the priests are going to go out. And they're going to blow the trumpets. And they're going to sound that alarm. And he said, on that seventh time, I want you to walk around that city seven times on the seventh day. He said, and when you walk around that seventh time, he said, I want you to shout. I could just see them as they was anxious before they walked around that first time. The trumpets were blowing. I wish I had a trumpet right now. They were blowing that trumpet. And they were sounding that alarm. Glory to God. And on that second time around, I can feel the Shekinah kind of glory, Brother Wayne. I feel it right here in the middle of my back. Glory to God. I can feel the presence of the Lord. And as they begin to walk around that wall, glory to God on that third time. Glory to God. They said, man, I feel something coming on. Glory to God. the fall. Amen. This world, when you see people go into a house of God yes. and don't have no remorse about their self, yep. Sister Tanya, and they go in and they take a gun and they start shooting innocent people. That's right. And they kill. Yep. Glory to God, there's no fear of God anymore in the house yes. of God. Yes. You got preachers that are sitting up at the pulpit and they'll kill an innocent person. Before they get them saved, they'll Amen. kill them. They'll Instead of preaching the word. Amen. Somebody this morning, God said, You're right there on that sixth day. <laughs> you're there on that sixth day. And you feel like there's weights. And there's a wall that's built around you. And that wall is holding you down and saying, oh, You can't do that no more. You can't serve God no more. You can't do like you used to do. You can't go back out and do things if you get right with God. You can't go back out there and do the things of the world anymore. You can't do those things. The devil knows if you get the blood applied to your life, he knows that you can't go and sin and do sin no more. The devil does not want you to be And people is losing their lives every day. Yes. They're slipping by, Sister Connie. They're falling away. Uh, uh, Adam got a call last night on his pager. Some woman having breathing difficulties. Your life is like a vapor. It appears for a little while. It vanishes away. It's gone. But God said to tell you you're there at the breaking point. You're at the sixth day. But the Bible said that on that sixth day they begin to march, Brother Wayne. And I believe with all my heart, I believe the heavens started opening up. Amen. And I believe that those angels in heaven began to make a shout unto the Lord. Right. The angels went before Joshua. Yep, Glory to God, the Bible don't say that, but I believe it in my mind that the angels had God had done dispatched them angels before Joshua. And he said to Joshua, on that seventh time as they begin to walk, glory to 
God as they begin to walk on that seventh time. Somebody still stuck on the sixth day. God keeps showing me the sixth day. But on that seventh day, Brother Wayne, they started out again. On that seventh time, they started to walk in again. Man and priestess begin to blow. I believe they blow with all their might. I don't believe they blow like they did on the sixth day. I don't believe they blow like they did on the fifth day. But I believe on that seventh time, as they begin to march around that walls, glory to God, they begin to blast as loud as everything that they have within them. They begin to blast their trumpets. And glory to God, the people, Joshua told them, he said, I want you to shout. Glory to God. said them walls glory to God them walls begin to crumble them big great walls brother Austin begin to crumble into pieces and little bitty pieces glory to God can I tell you if you just shout Jesus simple. It's that simple. Amen. Glory to God, Brother Wayne, them walls begin to fall down. And I could just see them people shouting a praising God. God, we thank you, God, for giving us this city. God, I thank you, God, for tearing these walls down. I thank you, God, for tearing that wall a middle petition down. I thank you, God, for tearing that wall of tradition. I thank you, God, for tearing that curse wall down off of me. Man named Achan. 
Not the way. The devil got in his mind. Brother Adam and the devil started building a wall up around Aiken. And he said, oh, wouldn't you like to have that right there? Ain't that pretty? Wouldn't you just want that? Just like the devil said, oh, you out there in the live stream today. The devil saying, oh, wouldn't you just like to have one more shot of heroin? Oh, wouldn't you just like to have one more hit of cocaine? Just one more snort? Oh, would you just like to have one more hit on that meth just one more time? Oh, would you just like to have some of that bath salt just one more time to make you go crazy? Don't you just want that one more time? Why don't you just reach out and get it one more time? And that one more time might take you to hell. That one more time might be your last time. Oh, the devil can tell you here's the devil. you've been doing. You want to live the same old way that you've been living. Oh, but can I tell you this to be your last chance. This to be your last opportunity. Lord, that God, the devil wants you to get a hold of that cursed thing. He wants you to hold on to that cursed thing. Glory to God. Brother Wayne and Aiken went and got it. And he took it back to the camp. And he hid it in the camp. Hid it under his tent. Think like nobody wouldn't know where it was at. They went out to fight. Went out to fight. They began to lose the battle. And Joshua couldn't figure out. Well, man, we just tore down the walls of Jericho. Man, God was for us. And now God's going to let us lose a battle. He's going to let us lose this war. And Joshua went and got down on his face. And he buried his face in the ground. And he said, Lord God, why have you done this? Why are you letting us lose? And God spoke to him. and said, because there's a curse thing in your camp. There's sin in the camp. And you've got to get sin out of the camp. Glory to God. went and he called them all in and he said did anybody take anything out of that city that was not supposed to be took because God said destroy everything yes. nobody would say nothing yes, and God showed Joshua that Achan had took it and God showed him right where it was at. And he sent him to his tent and said, you go get it. They went and they got that curse thing. And they brought it before Joshua. And Joshua took him. He said, I told you not to take nothing out of that city. Oh, just one little thing ain't going to hurt nothing. That's just the way the devil is. No, just one more little drink ain't going to hurt nothing. One more little smoking pot ain't going to hurt nothing. One more little drink of Jack Daniels ain't going to hurt nothing. Just one more. Just one more. One more. Somebody out there in the live stream today, the devil saying, just one more drink. Just one more. And you get in your car and you start down the road and you have a wreck. Guess what? Hell's going to be your home, Lord. Are you going to do something to some person? Just one. Just one more. One more value ain't going to hurt nothing. Yep. One more lower sin ain't going to hurt nothing. One more Percodan ain't going to hurt nothing. Yep. One more hydrocodone ain't going to hurt nothing. Just one more. Yep. Just one more. That one more might cause you to overdose yep. and die yep. and be lost and go to a devil's hell yep. over one. Amen. One yep. cursed thing. <coughs> one cursed thing in your wall. And Joshua told him, said, you take him down to the valley of Acorn. And you stone him and his family. You stone them and you kill them over one thing. One little pretty thing. Brother Wayne, one little shiny thing, Brother Austin. One. Little thing. 
one little sin. The Bible said no sin shall enter in Amen. to the gates of that city. Right. Not one. Not one little white light. Not one little black light. Not one big black light. Not one big white light. Because all lies are lies. The Bible said all lies shall have their part in the lake of fire. He said where there be worm dieth not. The fire is never quenched. Be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Glory to God. And I'm telling you today. God told me to tell you that you're stuck on that sixth day. And if you don't get past that sixth day, that walls will not come down. Amen. That walls will not come down. And did you know that you can have a thing on you? I, you know, I just read something earlier today. I, I, I read last this morning, I read in Jonah, how, how God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. And he told him, he said, you go to that city. It's a wicked city. And you go tell them that I am going to destroy their city. Amen. And Jonah said, I'm not going to go to that city. I'm not going there. I'm not going to go tell them that. And, and Jonah went to Joppa. Glory to God. He went down there. He said, I'm going on over here to Tyrus. I'm going to get on the ship and I'm going to go out of here on the water. And the Bible said that he went out there on the water. You say, God won't destroy things. Yes, God will. And God said, I'm going to destroy that city. Glory to God. And Jonah, glory to God, got on that ship. And he just went down there and laid down and went to sleep. Man, I got away from God. Amen. Jonah built a wall up around him right there. He said, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to sleep. Brother Adam, he went down there and went to sleep. And all of a sudden, God calls. Now this is what God did. You say God don't do things. God will cause a storm in your life. That's yeah. all right. Amen. God will cause trouble to come to your life. Amen. God will cause havoc to come to your life right. to get your attention. That's right. Glory to God. God caused a mighty tempest, a storm in the water, in the ocean. And old Jonah thought, man, I've escaped. And those men, they tried and tried and they told. And that boat was being broke into pieces. Tried to be broke into pieces. And they thought, what has come up against us? What cursed thing has come against us? Who has brought this thing upon us? They began to talk amongst one another. It wasn't them. The shipmaster went down there and said, Get up there, boy. Say, call on your God. We done call on our God and he ain't done nothing. Amen. Call on your God. Jonah gets up, comes up there, and he sees what's going on, Brother Wayne. Yes, it is. And the Bible, Jonah said, I, I caused this great thing to come upon me. He said, just throw me overboard. Everything will be okay. Just throw me overboard. And those men had passion. Compassion, and they said they just kept on towing. They kept on towing. No, we're going to make it to land. They just kept on. And the winds and the waves started getting worse and worse. Just like somebody today, you got that wall that's built around you. And right. God has caused a storm to come into your life. Uh, glory to God, a storm that's blowing, a brewing and a blowing. Uh, glory to God. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, those men said, we're going to cast lots. Uh, and they cast lots. Uh, and the lots fell upon Jonah. Uh, and the Bible said that those men before that, uh, they began to throw things off the ship, trying to lighten the ship, uh, right. trying to lighten the load. Glory to God. Somebody in here, God's trying to tell you something this morning. You need to lighten your load. You need to call out upon God. The storm is a brewing. God is causing havoc in your life. And He's trying to tell you there's a way of an escape this morning. There you go. Amen. Hallelujah, Brother Wayne and Jonah. Glory to God, it fell upon Jonah. And Jonah said, just cast me overboard. And God caused a great fish to be right here at the right time. That's right. And God made the first three point shot and he threw Jonah off that boat. He went right into that fish's mouth. Oh. And the Bible said that that fish swallowed Jonah. And Jonah went into the belly of that fish. Jesus called it a whale. And he went into the belly of that fish. Brother, 
hang on. He said that he went down into the depths of hell. He was in hell. He said the bars was up around him. He was in the rib cage of that fish. That was the bars that God showed me this morning. That was around him. The seaweed was wrapped around his neck, choking him out. And Jonah began to cry out to God. He began to cry out. Get 
in your truck. I did it by an air trailer park. So get Nora and the kids up and come to the house. Said, don't say nothing to Nora and them. Don't say a word. Said, Mama's had a heart attack. Said, get to the house. I put them in the truck with Brother Adam and I left Bonaire and I was sitting in Glasgow in five minutes. I was sitting in Glasgow. I was sitting in front of her house as the ambulance was pulling into the driveway. And I walk in and I see her laying down on the floor. And the paramedic down there really working, trying to get her to come alive. I stood by the side of the door, just like this right here. And I said, God, take me, don't take her. She's a good woman. God, take me, don't take her. And God said, no, I'm taking her. She's coming home to be with me. The Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I said, God, please don't take her. God, please don't just take me, God. God said no. And God took her out. Brother Adam, there I was. She told me that night. She said, David, you'll be in church with me one more time. She said, you'll be in church with me one more time. And she said, you'll have your hair cut too. She prayed for me that I'd get my hair cut. Just let me work with her one more time. Just let me work with her. Just let me work with her a little bit more. And I kind of hardened my heart a little bit because God wouldn't take me. The day of the funeral. The day before the funeral, I was at the funeral home. And that embalming, the guy that done the embalming, he said, man, I don't know nothing about that woman. But he said, that woman loved God. That woman was pure. He said, when I began to embalm her, said her blood came out just as clear, just as beautiful. And he said, I felt somebody standing behind me. And he said, I felt her put her hand upon my shoulder. He said, I felt her everywhere I went. She was right there with me. The day they brought her over to Samson Street Church, they laid her coffin out in front of the altar. Brother Bill Kinslow came over to her dad, the Norton's dad, Connie's dad, and said, Do you think anybody will fall out in the spirit today? Do you think anybody will fall out? They didn't just have a little funeral service, they had church. There was people shouting, dancing around the coffin. People praising God. That's what she wanted. And her daddy looked at Brother Bill and said, yes, said he'll be the first one. And I said, you're crazy. No, I won't. I said, no, I built that wall that much more. <coughs> that mortar on there that much more. They began to give people to come up and look at the fear for the last time. People shouting as they walked by the coffin. I mean, they were singing Holy Ghost filled songs. People were shouting and dancing in the Spirit of God. I sit right there where Brother Wayne's at, was at Samson Street. And Harry said, Ain't you going to go up here? I said, No, I'm not. I'm not going up there. He said, Yes, you are. I said, No, I'm not. You got to realize. I love this woman. She was more than a mother-in-law to me. And he said, son, I said, go up there and view your mother-in-law. And I got up and I went up there and I was just going to say my goodbyes and I was going to sit down. That was what I had in my mind. I walked up to that coffin. Brother Austin, and I reached over and I said, Mom, I love you. And 
and I seen you and I started to turn around and something grabbed a hold of my hand just like this right here. And I couldn't move. And she said, I'm not going to let go of you until you ask God to forgive you of your sins. She said, I'm not going to let go. And Brother Adam, they said I fell out in the floor. I was the first one. And I'm allergic to those smelly things that come under your nose. The funeral director put one on this side and one on this side. Trying to get me to come too. And Connie's brother Stevie come up there. That's the last thing I remember. Come up there and he laid, his, laid my head in his lap. And he told those funeral directors, said, You just leave him alone. You don't know where he's even at. That's right. And he said, David, he said, tell mama that I'm going to get myself ready and I'm going to come to be with her. But she kept holding on to my hand. And she kept saying, David, I'm not going to let go until you say, God, forgive me. Brother Adam, I said, I laid there in that floor. And Norris, oldest sister, had went on to be with the Lord. And she had a hold of my other hand. And she said, David, you used to come to the hospital and you read the Bible to me. And I'm not going to let go neither until you ask God to forgive you of your sins. Brother Gavin, I held on as tight as I could hold on not to say, God, forgive me. I can't want that wall just to be built up. They said I shouted out with a loud voice. I broke in walls to hell. <laughs> I began to shout and say, God, please forgive me of my sins. Amen. Guess what? I felt one of them rocks begin to break. <laughs> they said I cried again, Lord, God, please forgive me of my sins. I said, God, if you forgive me of my sins, I said, I don't want to be like I was back a while back. I said, when I come back this time, I want to be better than I ever was. I said, I want to be cocky and loaded like a double barrel shotgun. I want to be able to preach the word of God. Set my hands held up all through that service. I broke the walls down. Right. God said, Get out of that sixth day and break the walls down today. Glory to God. Amen.
some Marcel, brother man.
And I still thank him for my arm. Thank you. A lot of y'all don't know, some of you do know, Bonnie, I don't know if she knows, I haven't seen her in a while, but after I had surgery in July, I couldn't raise my arm, my left arm go more than shoulder high, oh. and um, I couldn't fix my hair or nothing, Miller had fixed my hair for a couple months, but I went to a church in Mississippi, and this brother was there, and he called, after the church was over, he called me out, well, he talked to Miller and he asked him if he cared if I prayed for him. He prayed for me and he called out nerve damage in my arm and I knew God had showed him that because I didn't have that before surgery, but after surgery, after they done surgery on, on me, I couldn't embrace my arm. So I knew God showed him that because I didn't know him from nobody and he didn't know me from nobody and at that time didn't even know his name. But I thank God that God moved on it and I'm able to raise my arm. I was on a cane and I was having to walk with a cane and I was having to ride in the carts at Walmart. But and there ain't nothing wrong with riding in the cart at Walmart if you need it. But I thank the Lord that He touched my legs and now I don't have to have it. I don't need it. I thank the Lord. He's my savior. He's my life. That's right. And if there's anything I can ever tell you is give your heart to Jesus and draw close to him every day. Live for him every day That's as right. if it was your last day of life. Because it very well could be. Right. We don't know right. when the death angel is going right. to come. That's why it pays to stay close and prayed up with God. Because when trouble comes, you don't have to get down and you don't have to repent of the 50 things you've done. When trouble comes, you can just speak the word and ask God to do it. And I praise Him for being my Savior. Like I said, that is the most good, best advice I can give you is get your heart right with the Lord and live for Him every day as if it was your last day. Because perilous times is here. You know the Bible, uh, Gerald Crabb wrote a song and I sang it the other day, perilous times are sure to come. Perilous times are here. We have no promise of tomorrow. We have no promise of safety tonight or tomorrow or next week. Because people have no morals anymore. They have no godly fear. They don't fear God. You know, this church, this building that we use for church, is a holy place and people used to respect that and people wouldn't dare come in you know with a gun or people wouldn't dare to come in and start an argument people Amen. wouldn't dare to come in and start a fight because it was holy ground Amen. and back years ago people respected that back right. years ago people respected funeral homes a lot of times they don't respect that neither right. you know somebody could die and you will go have a big fuss and fight right in front of the dead person in the casket Amen. people have no morals and they have no respect Amen. But the thing about it is, we need to respect God, respect His house, and live close to Him because we never know when He's going to call us home. Amen. 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 Like the Bible says, you're promised today, not tomorrow. That's right. We could go home tonight, or today. Matter of fact, we could go home today and sit down in our recliner and not wake up. Amen. My nephew, come home from work. Went in, come in, sit down. About dinner time. Staring fast his eyes upon his wife. Never said a word. His daughter comes in from school. She said, your daddy must be asleep. He's not saying nothing. And she went over there and she said, she sat there watching him. He's looking straight at mama. She went over there and she said, daddy, daddy, he wouldn't respond. He had, had a heart attack and died. So see, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow. Like I said, we could go home today. And today could be our last day. This could be our last service today. And where would you spend eternity? Where would you spend eternity? I check my life every day. Brother Austin, I check my life every day. I say, Lord God, if there's anything in my life, not everybody else's, but mine. 
There's anything in my life, God, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my trespasses and my transgressions. Forgive me of my mistakes and my downfalls. I say, God, forgive me. Because I don't want nothing in my life that's going to cost me to die and go to a devil's hell. Paul denied himself daily. In other words, he repented daily. He repented and said, Lord, if I've done anything, forgive me. And that's what we're supposed to do. Not just because we uh, get ready to go to bed at night and we ask Him to watch over us and, and if we've done anything wrong, forgive us. But we're supposed to ask Him to forgive us through the day. Because right. we might have said something to somebody we didn't mean to, but we could have said something out of the way to somebody that hurt their feelings. And I wouldn't want them to get to heaven and God say, you hurt their feelings and you didn't ask me to forgive you for it. That's right. I appreciate each and every one of you that's come out and been with us today. We love you. Glad you come back and be with us. Glad to see Nora's cousin down here with us today. Yeah. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, man, we used to have, I was telling Adam, I said, man, we used to have baptizing. And she's the one I was telling you about. I said, we used to have baptizing. And I said, Brother Bill Kinslow baptized her down there at Barron River. And I said, she floated on her back in the water. And I said, then uh, Nora's brother throwed her over his shoulder and packed her out because she was still under the power of God. I said, used to, we'd go to the baptizing, people would shout. When they got dumped under, now you dump them under, they just get up and shake off and just walk away. But man, I remember used to, they used to, they, wouldn't they bother you go down there, they dump them under, they'd come up and shout. If they didn't have the Holy Ghost, they went under the water, they come up speaking in tongues. Yeah. Why? Because they were hungry. People that nowadays, they get saved, they slide down the slide and say, in the name of Jesus, you're baptized. Or in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You say, brother, are you crazy? No, there's a church in, is it Louisiana? I think it's in Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Got their water slide in their sanctuary. And they let them slide down this water slide and they baptize them. As they slide down the water slide. Times has changed, but I'm it telling you. Change. He said, I was saying yesterday and today and forever, and I changed not. Hey, I love to go down to the, somebody asked me, but I go to the creek and baptize somebody in the cold weather. Hey, if they want to be baptized, we go and ain't that right, Brother Wayne? Amen. We'll duck them under. We ain't afraid of it. Amen. Well, we've done it. They broke the ice when they baptized me back years ago. I was 17 years old, Brother Gavin. And the preacher said, now, son, I, I believe you said you wanted to be baptized. I said, yeah, but why'd you wait for now? <laughs> I mean, the ice, the creek had done froze over. The ice was about that thick. They took these big old sledgehammers out there. And they began to bust that water loose, bust that ice loose. And my mom said, oh, honey, you don't want to go in that water. You'll get sick. It's cold. You don't want to get... Man, when I stepped into that water, my feet got a little cold. But Brother Adam, when I began to walk on out into that water, that water just got warm. When they ducked me under, Brother Wayne, I don't know what happened when I came up out of the water. They said I was shouting on that ice. And I, I, I might have been sliding on that ice. But I tell you what, God came in. It don't matter how cold water is, God will calm it down. Appreciate the Lord today. Tonight, church starts at 6 o'clock. Since the pastor, Brother Wayne, is going to be bringing the word to him tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited. If he does like he done the other day. You better look out. I'll tell you, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited. Sissy, did you get what you needed from the Lord today? Amen. He bring you back today. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus will be happy. Sis, come back and be with us. Bonnie, you and Kayla and Mike, y'all come back and be with us. We love to have y'all. Appreciate you. We love y'all. I want Brother Jeremy to come here a minute. This boy right here, God has really took his boy a long way. I was at home the other day and I seen a live stream. Jeremy's on your live stream. Let me click on him a minute. And he had a friend that was uh, video chatting with him. 
And I seen him. And he told his friend, he said, you better watch what you say. My pastor's in here. Amen. He said, I'm he said I, I, I will. He said, because, man, I'm telling you. He said, I've got something the other day at church. Amen. And he said, I ain't like I used to be. That's right. So there's a change. Amen. Well, his daddy come in there. And he said, Brother Miller, I'm sorry. I said, that's all right. I said, mind your mom and daddy. That's all I told him. I said, you mind them? Go get your shower. Amen. I didn't say nothing else. Now, other preachers would have probably ran their mouth and got smart and hateful. But I did. I said, you mind your mom and daddy. The Bible said, honor your mother and father. That's right. Amen. Unless your days be shortened upon this earth. Amen. And I'm proud of him. I'm glad that God has changed his life. He's telling people about the church. Amen. He's telling people what God's doing. And he's excited. Right. He's just 15 years old. 15 years old. Brother Austin here. He got the Holy Ghost last Sunday. Man, he said it's just like fire in his hands. He's, he's broble. He tells everybody. Amen. He just flat out tells them right to the point. He don't back down. And I think that's what God does for you. Right. Appreciate Amen. you. Appreciate Brother Jeremy. Appreciate everybody. Brother Gavin. God sent him here. He plays the drums. See, I said, Connie said, drums? We ain't even got no drum players. I said, don't worry. God will provide. That's right. Amen. And God's blessed us with two drum players. And I thank the Lord. Amen. She thank the Lord. And I've got one more that's on her way. She's on her way. And that's my oldest daughter. She's coming back to the Lord. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for being here today. We love you. We want to invite you to come back and be with the Lord. Anybody got a quick testimony this morning? Brother Jeremy. I just want to thank the Lord for, like, Brother Ellen said, giving me what I got last weekend. I want to thank Him for giving me a good friend like Brother Adam. He's helped me through a lot of things. and I I went away from the Lord for eight years, as some of y'all probably don't know. And I, well, I met Brother, I met brother Adam at, well, actually doing community service. And then I talked to him at, a, at the Eats Hall Fair. And he was telling me about church, and I got back in the church with him, and it, I came a long way. And then I met Brother Miller, and I've come a whole lot further than I was. I've turned my life around. I'm a brand new man. Amen. I mean, I've told my best friend about this church, even though she's Baptist. She brightened my day this morning. She said, I'll come. I'll talk to you this afternoon. So hopefully, praise the Lord, she'll be here. I just want, again, I just want to praise the Lord for all He's done for me. Amen. Somebody else. Anybody else? I'll give you. That blood work's going to be just as good as the other was. Amen. The devil's a liar. And God's right. the healer. Right. Hallelujah. Somebody else. I want to thank the Lord for what he done for him and his daughter. You know, I thank the Lord. He let her grow an inch. And uh, she didn't going to have to have surgery right now. So Amen. Praise Lord, but I praise the Lord for that good report. Yeah, we prayed for her last week. Sunday. We prayed for her Sunday morning. She don't have to have surgery. Glad to see you, Sister Tanya here today with us. Amen. She's uh, recuperating from surgery. I remember uh, her. She's going to have another one. Yeah. yeah. In January. January. Amen. God's moving. Amen. Anybody else want to give God praise this morning? I want to thank God for seeing my little girl sing this morning. Amen. 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 Good job. On the way here, I didn't know how she would cope with it. Uh, I just want to praise him for all the things he said to me. I want to thank him for when I go 
took a bad hard time. Uh, Lord, being the same player. Hey, Amen. And her sitting here, what you mean, go through what I go through. And I try to leave her towards God. Amen. Blessing Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody else. All right. Nobody else. I'm gonna stand. Last brother Austin to dismiss us this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the good reports that we got you. And I thank you, Lord, for the good prayer request that we got you today. And I ask you, Lord, to take us and leave out of here. Give us a safe trip home and a safe trip back to practice, Jesus, in your name.